today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. My question is, what are you expecting in 2022? You say, well, I'm expecting it to get worse. Well, it will get worse, but what are you expecting in the midst of it getting worse? That it affects you? That it stops you? That, that, that everything shuts down around you? No, that's not what I'm expecting. I mean, I'm expecting to go to another level. Have you got your Bibles with you today? Well, let's open them to Psalm 145 once again. We're going to continue talking about the prophetic word that the Lord has given me for 2022. And let's go ahead and put it up on the screen, if we will, please. And let's all read it out loud together. 2022, the year of the opened hand of God. Unusual, extraordinary, and supernatural provision. And I think we ought to give the Lord a praise in advance for that. Amen. Praise God. Now, let me remind you before we read Psalm 145, just to reiterate some of the things we talked about last Sunday. The Hebrew letter representing the number 20 means an open hand. It also means giving freely. When you see the open hand of God, it represents he's ready and willing to give freely. It also represents provision. The open hand of God represents provision. And then in the Hebrew, the number 22 is symbolic of disorder and chaos. And so as I was praying about all this, the Lord said, you tell the people that in 2022, if they will not allow all the chaos and disorder to shake them, they will experience the open hand of God. Amen. Supernatural, unusual, and extraordinary provision, praise God. Amen. Now, Jesus said, when the disciples asked him about the end, one of the first things he said was, number one, don't be deceived. And then also he said, see that you be not troubled. They talked about all the chaos and all the disorder that would be at the end. And of course, this is not the end, but we are in the beginning stages of it, obviously. And notice that he said, see that you be not troubled. So that says to me that it is possible to live right in the middle of chaos and disorder and not be troubled by it. Now, that means you're going to have to keep your focus on God and not on CNN. Yes. Amen. Yes. See that you be not troubled. How in the world could you not be troubled in a troubled world? Well, it has everything to do with what you're focusing on. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes in the word. Praise God. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're listening to anything other than the Word of God, it's not likely faith will come. It's more likely that fear and worry and distress will come. So keep your eyes on God and keep your eyes on His Word. Can you say amen? amen. And then I learned also that many Hebrew scholars say that the number 20 also signifies expectancy. Expectancy. And what I hear the Lord saying in that is expect to see the hand of God, even in the midst of disorder and chaos. Now, expectancy is very important because it's very closely associated to faith. Real Bible faith expects. If you're not expecting and yet you say, I'm exercising my faith in God, then that, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, balance out because real Bible faith expects. Jesus said, be it unto thee according to your faith. That, that would signify he's expecting you to expect something from him. Can he say amen? amen? I don't ever say I'm trusting God and then have my head down, wringing my hands and a sad look on my face. When I say I'm trusting God, I say it with a smile. 
Amen. Amen. And, and my smile is getting broader and bigger because he has never let me down for 52 years. Amen. Amen. So I think I'll just keep living by faith. Yes. In fact, that's the way the Bible says we should live. The just shall live by faith. So my question is, what are you expecting in 2022? You say, well, I'm expecting it to get worse. Well, it will get worse, but what are you expecting in the midst of it getting worse? That it affects you? That it stops you? That, that, that everything shuts down around you? No, that's not what I'm expecting. I mean, I'm expecting to go to another level. We've been breaking barriers since 2020, 2021, and I'm expecting us to break even more barriers in 2022. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I got my eyes on him. I got a smile on my face. I got a dance in my step. I got a reason to get up every morning, and praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout with me a little bit, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Psalm 145. And let's just uh, read verses 8, 9, and then 14, 15, and 16. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Verse 14. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all that be bowed down. And the eyes of all wait upon thee. Now, that, that is a reference to expectancy. The eyes of all wait upon thee. We're expecting something from him. And thou givest them their meat in due season. Notice God responds to people that are expecting him to do something. Yes. They expect he giveth. They expect he giveth. They expect he giveth. Say it with me. I expect he giveth. I expect he giveth. Look at your neighbor and say, you expect he giveth. Turn to your other neighbor. You expect and he giveth. That's just the way God is. Can you say amen? Now, dropping down to verse 16, thou openest thine hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. So notice when God opens his hand, get ready. Provision is on its way. Amen. I'll say it again. When God opens his hand, get ready. Provision is on his way, uh, on its way. But notice it happens for those whose eyes are up on him. In other words, it happens for people that are expecting it. Now be careful what you expect because it's a proven fact. You get what you expect. Even psychologists tell us that. You get what you expect. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I have received everything I have expected. And I believe that I will receive everything that I expect from hereafter and here on. Amen. Amen. I can't think of anything that I've ever expected God to do that he hasn't done. And actually better than I expected it. <laughs> Because he's the God that does exceeding abundant above all that we can ask or think. Can you say amen? amen? Praise God. Now, the Passion Translation says, when you open your hand, it's full of blessings. I love that. When God opens his hand, it's full of blessings. And who do you suppose they belong to? You. Amen. You're the seed of Abraham. You're a child of the living God. That's part of your inheritance, praise God. God has his hand full of blessings and they belong to you. But are you expecting them? Can you say amen? amen. Say full of blessings. Full of blessings. Now, another translation says it this way. You uh, uh, alone provide, O Jehovah. And you do, you do it liberally with an open hand. You do it liberally with an open hand. One commentary says, the living God has suitable supplies at hand and those he gives until satisfaction is achieved. 
Hallelujah. So God wants you satisfied. I like this. I'm glad I came. I hope you like this, praise God. God will pour out until you are satisfied. Glory to God. I'm not real quick to say uh, I'm satisfied. Uh, Just keep pouring. Amen. Just keep pouring. Hallelujah. All right. Now listen to this and we'll get on to some, I'm I'm reiterating what we said last week, but we'll get on to something new here in just a moment. It went on to say in this commentary, if we will just wait on the Lord, our wait will not be in vain. Another translation says, the Lord opens his hand and gives bountifully all things to enjoy. Amen. Amen. God wants you enjoying being a Christian. (laughs) He doesn't want you suffering because you love him, you serve him. He doesn't want you being a second-rate citizen because you're a Christian. He wants you enjoying life. Jesus said from the Amplified Bible, John 10, 10, I've come that they might have life to the full till it overflows and enjoy life. I'm enjoying life. I really am enjoying my life. Amen. And there's no where it says you can only enjoy your life when you get to heaven. No, Jesus said, you know, in the model prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants us living in earth like we're already in heaven. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to enjoy heaven. How about you? Well, if I'm, in, if I'm going to enjoy heaven, then why can't I enjoy life down here? Amen. Now, a lot of people never learned how to enjoy life. And the main reason is because they don't know the word. Thank you for your enthusiasm. They don't know the word. You know, I was like that before I surrendered my life to the Lord because I didn't know the truth about God. When I was a young boy, all I remember when I went to church, and I loved the pastor. He was a wonderful man. You know, he wasn't trying to deceive us. He just didn't know. And it was, it was just a little country Baptist church. And his, his, our pastor's name was Jerry Smoker. And he had this real deep voice. And since my name was Jerry, when he'd, he, he, he'd come to our, he lived down the road from us. I used to go mow his lawn for him when I was a young boy. I loved Brother Smoker. And, and he knew everybody on our road. And he, you couldn't sneeze without Brother Smoker knocking on the door. Can I pray for you? <laughs> He was a wonderful man, but he was just operating in the light that he had, the knowledge that he had. Now, he was, he was a little bit disappointed when I started going to Carolyn's church. Now, he lived right there next to her mom and dad, and he knew them well. Everybody knew Brother Smoker on our road, and, and he knew they were Pentecostal people, Okay. <laughs> They spoke in tongues. <laughs> and when he heard I was, when Carol and I started dating, I, was, I, was, I started going to her church. He said to me one day, now, he and I used the same barber. Everybody used Tommy Wilson, <laughs> the barber, because he's in our neighborhood. And everybody that I knew used Tommy Wilson. And I went in to get a haircut one day. And Brother Smoker sitting in the chair and Tommy's cutting his hair. And Brother Smoker said, now jury, jury. It sounded like jury. Now jury, the creatures are wonderful people. But you come on back where you belong. You know? <laughs> you know? Now, now they're wonderful people, but they're not like us. And you come on back where you belong, you know? And then after I went into the ministry and he saw me on television and this was just before he went home to be with the Lord 
And, and we were in town. We were already here in Fort Worth, and we were in Shreveport. And, and I asked my father-in-law, does Tommy Wilson still have the barbershop? He said, oh, yeah, I still go there. I said, I'm going to go let Tommy cut my hair, see if he remembers me. So I walked in, Brother Smoker's in the chair. <laughs> now, there, there are a lot of, lot of other guys waiting to get a haircut. This is one of them old Tommy barbershops. Everybody had a crew cut. <laughs> I almost walked out because I didn't have a crew cut and I thought I'd leave with one. But when I was young, that's, that's what I had, a crew cut. And when I walked in, Brother Smoker said, now there's a man that I'm very proud of. I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> now, once again, my purpose telling that story is I never heard things like I preached to you today. And Brother Smoker, he was a wonderful man, but he's just walking in the light that he had, okay? But uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't deliberately try to deceive us. You know, but I, I didn't hear things about God that attracted me to him. And, and I certainly didn't know that God wanted me to enjoy life. That's the reason I've, I fought serving him. Now, I had experiences as a young boy with the Lord. I knew I was called to preach from a young boy. But what I was hearing about God did not attract me to him. That's good. I, I wanted, since I was not going to preach, I was running from that. Then my ambition was to own my own automotive business and follow in the footsteps of my dad. And I wanted to be successful at it. I think it's born in every human being to want to be successful at something. Yeah. Yeah. I believe God puts that desire in, the, in a person. Yeah. So I wanted to be successful at what I was doing. And I didn't see any way that that could happen, being a preacher. Because I'd heard, poor, humble preacher. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Lord, you keep him humble, we'll keep him broke. <laughs> Anybody ever heard those kind of things? Now, that, that, when I'd hear things like that, oh, I ran to the altar real quick and surrendered my life to God. <laughs> no, I didn't. I turned the other way. Huh? But then when I got in the Word for myself and found out I'd been lied to, <laughs> not deliberately necessarily, but, you know, because that's all they knew, preaching some traditional doctrine, you know, but when I got in the Word myself, I mean, just Psalm 145 alone ought to change your attitude about God. Just that one chapter should change your attitude about God. Amen? And when I see He opens His hand, satisfies the desire of every living thing. When I see, delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. I was always told God is not interested in your desires. He's not even interested in your wants. And he may or may not meet your needs. You never know what God will do. And doesn't that give you that warm feeling all over? <laughs> huh? No, but he opens his hand. And hand represents provision. And he, and, he, and he gives liberally. He's not a stingy God. He gives liberally. Can you say Amen. It says, you, will, you, you alone will provide, O Jehovah, and you do it liberally with an open hand. The Lord opens his hand and gives bountifully all things to enjoy. Hallelujah. To enjoy. Praise God. Now, I would serve God if I didn't have a dime in my pocket. I would serve God if I didn't have a dime in the bank. I'd serve God if, if, if he never did another thing for me. I'd serve him for the rest of my life. But I know God. If you serve him with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, 
there's no way that you will go without for the rest of your life. Amen. That's totally uh, contrary to the nature of God. Can you say amen? amen. Don't your neighbor say, that's good preaching. Why aren't you shouting? <laughs> huh? Totally contrary to the nature of God. And once again, and he satisfies everyone with favor, goodwill, and loving kindness, another translation says. Amen. Now go back to the Passion Translation. When you open your hand, it's full of blessings. Hallelujah. Now go with me to Psalm 104. Time to get in some new material. Psalm 104. And still all has to do with the prophetic word for 2022. Look at verse 27. Well, let me say this before we start reading it. If you read Psalm 104 at the beginning, down to the scriptures we're going to read, then what it's saying, the psalmist here is talking about how that God provides for all of his creatures and all his creation. He talks about how he provides for the fish in the sea, the animals on land. In other words, everything God has created, it is his intention to provide for it. Amen. Amen. I read one commentary and it says, even though they cannot invent anything for themselves, talking about the fish and the, and the animal kingdom, even though they cannot invent anything for themselves, but nonetheless, he comes prepared, or it comes prepared for them that direct, I'm not reading this right, hold on. They cannot invent anything for themselves, but nonetheless, it comes prepared for them directly from the hand of God. Yeah. Well, oh. Hallelujah. The fish can't prepare for themselves, but it comes to them from the hand of God. The animal kingdom can't prepare, prepare for themselves, but it comes to them from the hand of God. Now, Jesus talked about this. In fact, hold your place there, and let's go to Matthew real quick. Matthew chapter 6. Hold your place in Psalm 104. Matthew 6. Look at verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought, for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the, than the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. He's talking about God's creation. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet... Everybody say yet. yet. In other words, he created them and his attitude is, I'll take care of them. Well, the apostle Paul says that we are new creations. We've been born again. Amen. God was responsible for that. When you did what it said to do, Confess Jesus as the Lord of your life. Believe that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. You were recreated by God. Amen. Uh, uh, the little Greek says, you are now a new species of being that never existed before. Amen. I'm not the same Jerry Savelle pre-February 1969. That man died. You're looking at a new creation. Yeah. And I might add, created in the image of God. Yeah. That means he's five foot seven and a half. <laughs> he weighs 149 pounds and he's good looking. <laughs> Just my own revelation there, okay? Okay. And he's left-handed. <laughs> now I know he's left-handed. How you know that, Brother Jerry? Because he put Jesus on the right hand where he wouldn't get in the way. <laughs> That's my own revelation, too. <laughs> when we get to heaven, if God seriously is left-handed, you come and apologize to me. 
<laughs> that you didn't believe me. Okay. All right, now listen. Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. How can you overcome the storms and challenges of life? How can you be victorious against Satan's attacks? Today's special offer, the Open Hand of God special package, contains Jerry Savelle's brand new four-part audio series, Open Hand of God, along with his revealing book, Show Me Your Glory. In this special package, Jerry teaches how to have unshakable faith, how to know God's will, how God's glory brings miracles, and how to overcome any adversity. Learn how God will open His hand and freely give to those who refuse to be shaken in the midst of chaos and disorder. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Open Hand of God special package. Discover how God will satisfy you with everything you need. Regardless of the hardships and troubles around you, God's open hand will cause you to win. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I pray that the lesson has been so beneficial to you, inspiring to you, and I trust, praise God, that you will position yourself to experience this prophetic word this year. God wants to open His hand, and He wants you to experience unusual, extraordinary, and supernatural provision. It can happen to you. It's happened to me. It's happened to other people who've heard me preach this. And praise God, it can happen to you. Why? Because God is no respecter of persons. Now, if you want to continue studying this message, it is available to you on four CDs talking about the hand of God representing provision. Every time you see the phrase hand of God in the Bible, most of the time it's talking about provision. But this is what God wants to do for you. This year, unusual, extraordinary, and supernatural provision, four CDs. Then right along with it, a book that I wrote a couple of years ago entitled, Show Me Your Glory. When you talk about the glory of God, it is the manifestation of the goodness of God, the presence of God, and the power of God. This goes right along with the series on the hand of God. So this is our resource package that you can order today. And I wanna to encourage you to do it while it's fresh on your mind. The resource package, once again, the hand of God. So all the information for ordering is on the screen or you can contact us at jerrysavelle.org and please do it right away while it's fresh on your mind because I know these messages will continue to inspire you. I want to thank you for watching today. I want to thank all of my partners for believing in us and helping make this all possible. You're a vital part of this ministry. You help us reach the world with a message of faith. Thank you. God bless you. And I'll see you again soon.